Hannah is crowned Miss International Ireland 2024. Hannah is a model, writer, musician, and a charity advocate. Her journey marked by overcoming chronic fatigue syndrome during her formative years propelled her into the spotlight early as she turned adversity into advantage by establishing herself as a prominent blogger and digital entrepreneur at just age of 13. So there's Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, Miss Earth, the Grand Slam, that it is an opportunity for young women to step forward, stand up for who they are and what they believe in. My life had, in essence, completely flipped on its head. I went from a very active preteen you know, playing tennis, swimming, performing arts, to all of a sudden not being able to do many of the things that had been so normal for me. My energy completely shifted and my immune system was depleted. I suppose have this creative outlet where I could explore and have some enjoyment in my life without having that identity anymore of the, the sick girl. Mm. And then later what happened was... Hannah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I'm very happy to be here with you. I'm very, very excited to speak to you today. You are the first person to represent, really, a uh, beauty pageant industry, such an uh, area of beauty that I have not explored yet mm -hmm. on this podcast. So I've had a person that has a lingerie brand. Yes. I've had a person that you know, works with women on a mindset area of life, but never something that's so represented so much in the media and actually has some good and bad connotations, which I would love to delve into more. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I would like to ask you, where are you at right now? What is the freshest for Hannah? <laughs> and where's your mind space at? Wow. Well, great question. Mm. <laughs> what I would say the, the, the most recent, I suppose, development for me is actually becoming Miss International Ireland. So I'm preparing for the global competition in Japan in November, which is Congratulations. right around the corner. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and I feel that that, as you say, there are positive and negative associations with what it means to be in a beauty pageant space. But for me, the reason I'm really enjoying this journey, I suppose, is because I see it as a, a vehicle. I see it as an empowerment platform for young women. And so with where I am at in my life at the moment, loving the creative arts, and as you kind of shared, my background has been I suppose entrepreneurial but also very much connected by the arts mm. I feel this is just a way to bring a lot of that together and so I'm just very excited and very explorative right now with my passions I suppose mm, I love that I love that you see it from uh, the best possible life uh, I would like to ask you I guess from when you've first become involved with the beauty pageants, can you just sketch us when was that and how did that come about? So I was first introduced, I suppose, to the realm of beauty pageantry in, my goodness, it must have been 2017. Mm. And so it was some time ago now. And for me, it was a an opportunity, I suppose, to meet lovely young women, all of whom I recognized have different passions, but the common denominator is a dedication to self-improvement, mm. I would say, but also community participation. This is one of the reasons why I love the beauty pageant space, even though to most people, it's what they see externally. It's the the, the catwalk side of things, mm. let's say. It's the, the fashion-oriented side of things. Really, what I love about it is the fact that it brings women together and creates an environment where there is in essence a sisterhood um, which has been a big thing for me that I've taken out of it but really it was just about meeting people who who share that passion for self-improvement and who share that passion for wanting to do something within their communities mm. so when I first was introduced to that realm I suppose because in Ireland it wouldn't be as big as it would be in some other countries like for example in South America and Colombia and Venezuela it's a huge platform the same in the US it's much bigger so when I was first introduced then I suppose I I definitely had that fire lit within me because I saw the the benefits far exceed the the negative associations mm. that may be surrounded at times I I love to hear that from somebody that's that's lived that reality mm -hmm. and obviously you're 
Miss International yes. Ireland now. So you lived it in and out. You've seen all the nooks and crannies of the of the machine. And I love that the thing that stands out to you is really the sisterhood and this community and this empowerment, this inspiration that you've gained from it. Because as you said, from somebody that doesn't know this world at all, mm -hmm. the only, um, let's say, interaction that they have with any of the beauty pageants is those glimpses on TV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I remember, for example, I stopped watching TV when I was 15, but when I was younger, wow. I remember. <laughs> I, I still have Netflix, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um, but I, I do remember when I was a kid and I was watching back in Latvia on TV, you know, Miss Universe and mm -hmm. so forth. It, it, it was very beautiful for a little girl mm -hmm. like me to observe, you know, all these crowns and all these dresses. But equally, even at that very young age, I there was a part of me that just saw it as a little bit cringe and a little bit superficial mm -hmm. and fake. At least the, the many girls that I saw speaking about it just kind of seemed like they were saying the same thing and it was a little bit staged, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is essentially that that, for someone maybe that hasn't de delved deeper into what these things actually stand for and what opportunities they give the women that mm -hmm. participate in them, that might be that's what they know and that's what they think. So I would love for you to just, you know, open this box a little bit more for all of us mm -hmm. and educate us a little bit. What, well, what, how did they even come about? What did they stand for? And what's the purpose of them? Well, I think what's important to contextualize maybe first off is that there are multiple pageant systems mm -hmm. as they're referred to. And I like to relate it to tennis because I'm a big lover of tennis myself. My sister is a tennis player. And when you look at tennis, there's Wimbledon, there's the US Open, there's the Australian Open, the French Open, the Grand Slams, mm. if you will. The beauty pageant world also has the same type of thing. So there's Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss International, Miss Earth, which are kind of referred to as the, the Grand Slams, mm. let's say. Um, and within each of those, they, they do have different nuances in terms of what makes them, I suppose unique yeah. let's say to one another but how I like to look at it is that the overarching objective is that it is an opportunity for young women to step forward step into their power to stand up for who they are and what they believe in and for some it's a an experience to grow in confidence like I know when I first competed that was a big thing for me mm. so standing up on stage and in my case I've always been a singer so I've always loved performing but in in that sense you could say that sometimes you're almost hiding behind a, a message or a role if you were in a musical let's say you're performing mm performing as someone else or when it comes to singing a song maybe performing as the character of that storyline whereas in this capacity you're standing on stage as yourself and I think for a young woman it can be quite formative in empowering her to feel that she can do that first and foremost but then off the back of that like it's a fantastic way to build relationships at least that was my own experience and to put you in an environment where you can maybe meet people who you maybe wouldn't have met otherwise, mm. to to build connections from a professional standpoint as well as a personal standpoint. So really, although there is that superficial element, there is much more to it underneath. But what I would speak to also when it comes to the superficial side, at least mm. for myself, you know, there were a number of challenges I faced when I was younger, as, as many of us face challenges, right? Whether it's health related, whether it's bullying, whether it's, um, you know, familial or, or otherwise, there are a number of challenges we all face that define us. And for me, I think having that experience where I could stand up and, and maybe be a version of myself that I, I didn't feel mm. maybe was possible prior to that at a, a younger stage in my life, it's, it's something that makes it very full circle. And I think it gives it a lot more meaning mm. to, to what we may see externally or on social media. So I'm a big believer that whether it's beauty pageants or otherwise, every young person should feel that they have an outlet where they can be empowered. So beauty pageants resonated with me and, and many other young women, but there can be sporting endeavors, there can be academic endeavors, there can be charitable endeavors. Like it's not limited to any one system, mm -hmm. but I do think it's important to see that this can be a great platform. I mean, some of the systems offer scholarships to university, some of them offer other opportunities. So it's, it's, it's much deeper, I suppose. I ACI. see. I see. And, and definitely I love, I love this part where everybody that 
is participating mm -hmm. in this event is really challenged to go out of their comfort zone. Uh, at least majority of people would, anyone that needs to stand on a stage. So mm -hmm. where for some people, they're just watching and they're judging and they're like, oh, this is just whatever. Someone <laughs> like standing pretty on a stage would, wow, sure, wow, sure. Eva, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, there's so much behind that because would the person that's criticizing or judging that way have the courage to step on the stage and, and be judged, <laughs> sure. quote unquote, right? Sure. So it takes it takes a lot of courage to muster in order to be able to put yourself out there in this way. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to me a little bit more about how do you think you won? Oh, interesting. Well, for me, in my case, there was the national competition that I competed in and I came second runner up in my competition and I won a couple of the awards. So in the, the different frameworks, there are a number of different pockets, let's mm. say, to the competition. So there's a sports round, there's a talent round, there's a charitable round, there's a public speaking round. So I was um, really delighted to come second runner up and also to win the Beauty with a Purpose Award, which is the charity side, which is really where my heart is I have to say and also the public speaking head-to-head -head challenge and then off the back of that basically I have the opportunity to now represent Ireland at Miss International in November in Japan um, and I think in my case you know what I can say is that there's so much work that goes in for all of the girls who compete. Um, but I would say that with with this competition, I suppose in particular going to Miss International now, I I would like to 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 think at least that the the work that I put in was just the the kind of culmination in what gave me the opportunity to now have that recognition mm. to go and represent my country. And I do think that it is something much bigger than any individual like every single girl or woman I should say who walks onto the stage is not just representing herself you know she is representing her nation and that's mm. really significant and something I think we, we recognize frequently with the likes of athletes who have the chance to represent their cities or their counties or their countries um, so having that opportunity now for me to do that as well is something that I take very very seriously and I really actually, as you're reminding me of all the different layers and facets that the concourse represents, it really is so much more than just the visual picture that we see again of the person, you know, looking pretty. There is the talent, there is the purpose, there's the public speaking. So it is really a multi-talented, multi-faceted. But there is a woman now who's just one miss universe in one of these countries who is 60 years old because Miss Universe has changed their um rules i suppose mm -hmm. or, or requirements so it used to be uh, the bracket of 18 to 28 approximately mm -hmm. that could compete but now they have actually shifted it so there's no age limit i love that so which much. is interesting so amazing so yes, it's a an evolving landscape what yeah. i would say it's i, I think that's landscape. a great that's very empowering and very mm -hmm. inspiring that 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 was the case and they abolished that rule and now we mm -hmm. just have a person mm -hmm. that one that's beautiful yeah. <laughs> Okay, and um, what I want really to put on emphasis in this episode is your mindset and how your mindset has helped you navigate throughout your life all of the challenges that you faced, which we will go into, mm -hmm. and also helped you on the flip side just really go to the next level in the various mm -hmm. endeavors that you've pursued in the various industries yeah. that you've pursued. <gasps> so Multiple lives in one, you could say. <laughs> literally, and your start wasn't... I guess the simplest, because when you were young, you had a diagnosis of a disease that really mm -hmm. shifted your life completely upside down. Mm -hmm. Can you share that a little bit with us? Sure. So basically, when I was 12, I had a number of infections that led to a, an eventual diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome. And basically, in a practical sense, what that looked like was I went from a very active preteen you know, playing tennis, swimming, performing arts, all of those things, to all of a sudden not being able to do many of the things that had been so normal for me. My energy completely shifted and in a nutshell, my immune system just was depleted. So that catalyzed a journey for me, I suppose, that was very much oriented around how to navigate you know, my formative years, because that period of time, I think for any 
young person child is is so essential especially mm. i think as a young woman when you're coming into yourself and you're you're forming who you are so this really impacted how i was navigating things from being able to no longer do many of the things that I had before, like playing tennis, and also it impacted my schooling. So I was very much in a situation where within a very short period of time, my life had, in essence, completely flipped on its head. Mm. However, what that facilitated, now it's it's always easy to have hindsight, hindsight yeah. right? <laughs> I'm sure many of us can relate to that. But But looking back, I can definitely see how that situation did facilitate me to pursue the blogging side of things. And, and I, at the time, like it was not an intentional, I'm going to set up this blog and mm. pursue this opportunity. It was very much, there's only so much time when you're, when you're off school, I suppose, especially at that young age when I was, I was getting very bored, but there was only certain things that I was able to do at the time because Physically. of my health situation. Yeah. And one day I just stumbled across a, a website called blogger.com. I'm sure you've heard of it. And I ended up speaking with my parents about just creating a blog for myself. And I did that at the time just to document my passion for fashion and to, I suppose, have this creative outlet where I could explore and have some enjoyment in my life without having that identity anymore of the the sick girl mm. uh, and then later what happened was that blog which initially started as a an outlet for me a, a survival mechanism if you will ended up being something that opened a lot of doors for me and kind of gave me a skill set that as we all know now with the digital age being so prominent and everyone and their dog having an Instagram mm. account, it's very much here to stay. So I feel very, you know, grateful, I suppose, for the the skill set that it helped me develop, but very much from, I, I suppose you could say a certain amount of luck that I started it at the time that I did. Mm. And how quickly did that then turn your life upside down mm. in the other direction <laughs> <laughs> so I would say but around the age of 15 16 was when I really started to understand it more and I had been going to some events at this point like having the opportunity to start networking I mm -hmm. suppose um, I'm not always the biggest fan of that word but I feel that what it enabled me to do was to put myself in environments with people who shared that same love of fashion, of art, of creativity, mm. from stylists to designers to TV presenters, models. And at the time, obviously, I was a teenager. So what this enabled me to do was to learn how to navigate certain environments and how to hold myself and how to build relationships, I suppose. Um, and so kind of from that point, what happened was that started picking up a little bit more and I had the chance to go to some different events like London Fashion Week mm. and, you know, the Berlin Fashion Week and just to experience some really incredible things. Um, but it was really around the age of 16 that I started to recognize that the skills that I had been learning, which just to give you, I suppose, a bit more context, I... I obviously had created this blog with blogger.com and there's a certain amount of templates that you could use mm -hmm. like WordPress or Squarespace or any of those platforms. But I was also at the time looking at some of these bigger websites that had a budget behind them. And obviously for me, it was just a a hobby, a creative outlet. And I, I recognized certain elements and I considered how can I emulate this? How can I have a similar look? Mm. So I started to, in essence, hack my own website to figure out mm. how to create some of these things which taught me a lot but at certain points didn't probably do the best for my my own website um but then what happened was all of those skills that I, I got to accumulate through that learning process mm -hmm. were something that I soon kind of recognized was not just applicable to the fashion industry or a fashion blog and it was something that many small businesses or entrepreneurs were actually seeking answers in relation to and so I started having some small businesses and some influencers and, and different people in those categories approach me asking me you know who did your website who did your logo and mm. so it kind of just started to open some doors me, I did that in the, <laughs> right <laughs> in in that capacity then and and then opened a whole new realm to me mm. off the back of that 
So you've then after that kind of explored the different avenues of consulting and different entrepreneurial and speaking, you know, your, your career just veered off in so many different yes. directions. <laughs> so. Yes. And, but there's always been a vein of art and some creative outlet as well that has been present in your life. I guess it started with a blog mm -hmm. and then how did that develop into other things? Well, I would say in my case, like fashion and also music, I, I mentioned survival mechanism. Mm -hmm. I feel like those, those two things became really important for me in the period of overcoming some of those obstacles that were presenting themselves in my life as a result of my health challenges. And so fashion and, and the love of creativity coupled with music really started to be that red thread, I suppose, in my life. Um, but how it's influenced me today, I suppose, is that it's kind of just all come full circle. And mm. I think that this opportunity with Miss International is a way to pull a lot of those things together because as we've kind of already touched on, there are so many different pockets mm. to it. Um, but really now, I suppose my, my hope and priority is to lean more into that because I think when it comes to mindset and purpose, we, we each have a skill set. And I think many of us know in our heart what really sets us alight, let's say. Um, and sometimes whether in a personal or professional capacity, we don't always give ourselves the chance to make space for that. Mm. And so I think for me, it was just about coming full circle and trying to find more ways to, to spend more time doing some of the things that I love. And now it's enabled me to maybe create that within my life in a practical sense, if that makes sense. Absolutely. I would love actually for you to, because you've we've discussed this prior as well, if you don't mind to delve a little bit deeper in the, in this progression and this journey of you going from this, let's say your first bit, your first passion, that turning that into business, then seizing these opportunities that all of a sudden became available to you and then steering it very much into the business, I guess, side of things. And then how and when you realize that maybe actually you'd like a little bit more of the creative outlet to take mm -hmm. the steering wheel in your life. And, and, and how does that all tie in now with the hindsight? How does the puzzle yeah. <laughs> come together? Because, and the reason why I ask you to elaborate this is because majority of the people listening mm -hmm. and people that are not listening, just generally people <laughs> in the world, they are most of the time stuck doing things that either are not fully fulfilling their purpose mm -hmm. or they straight up don't like mm -hmm. or they're feeling that maybe there could be something better that they could be doing but ultimately they're not doing what fills their heart so because you're I feel and of course feel free to correct me if I'm wrong that you're now stepping into this phase of your life where you're seeing the full picture and you have this understanding of what truly aligns with you and you're just doubling down on that mm -hmm. I'd like you to speak more of that journey before mm -hmm. and this understanding and how it happened for you so I think I mean as we were talking about earlier I feel like it's a continuous cycle of checking ourselves and, and asking ourselves you know is this aligned with me does this make sense for me am I tapping into those things that bring me joy because life is also about finding those those moments I suppose where we can really contribute in the best way which a lot of the time comes from enabling ourselves to use our skills in the best way possible I think in my case though what happened was off the back of the fashion blog which obviously started very much in that passion for fashion and the love of arts and creativity I had the tools let's say and the the roadmap eventually unfolded for me to create my my own brand agency so I started working with different entrepreneurs and businesses to help them with a whole host of things and then off the back of that it opened the doors for me to start traveling and to meet some very interesting people and to learn from some very interesting people and and so on and so forth you saw Richard Branson I did that's yes. amazing yes. <laughs> this is very cool mm. very very cool. any any particular learnings that you took away from that I would I would say with Richard Branson in particular what I found very fascinating was the 
the time that I met him was the same week that the Virgin rocket was launching. And so that's obviously a literal out of this world experience. And so having the opportunity to spend some time with him and, and talk with him around that very significant milestone was just a big reminder to me of how we can conceptualize ideas and bring those ideas to life if we have the right tools, the right resources, the, and right, the, right, the right people, but also I think the right mindset. Mm. And I feel like I'm very much a student of this as well. But what I really took away from that experience was that so much is possible. And one of the reasons I resonated with Richard was because he obviously had challenges of his own and he's been quite outspoken about his dyslexic um, challenge, let's say how that's impacted him, but also how it's uplifted him in certain senses to maybe think outside the box and to think differently. But I think he's a great example of someone who, even with those perceived challenges or those obstacles that came along, how he overcame them and turned it into a superpower that mm. enabled him to do so much more than many of us could ever imagine. So I think for me, all of those experiences and having the chance to learn and, and meet people, learn from and meet people like that really just started to shape me. But also, I suppose the, the common denominators were that a lot of these people, I feel, looking back, leaned into strengths of theirs. And so I think that kind of comes back to that question, right, of how, how can we each as individuals use the the strengths that we have and the skills that we have in a way that not only serves others, but also, I suppose, serves that bigger picture that we may wish to pursue for ourselves as well. Mm. Um, but like I said, I feel like I'm very much a student still, and I think I'm I'm still learning and, and navigating this process myself. But I suppose where it's come to now within my life, I'm just trying to pay more attention to the fact that life is literally finite. None of us know how much time we have. None of us know what tomorrow is going to bring. Mm -hmm. And so I think that some of the experiences in recent years, especially off the back of COVID and how that made society reshape itself, definitely gave me some moments of reflection when I, I suppose I questioned, am I really leaning into those things that make me feel my most alive and my most in in participation let's say with the community around me the people around me and the and the projects I'm involved with and how can I readjust to to create that space mm. I just want to point out one thing that I found really wonderful is when you were speaking you said not only for serving others, but also to align with what I really want, mm -hmm. which if you think about it, majority of people would have it otherwise phrased. It, would, it first starts with them and then, you know, what they do for others. So I think it's very uh, kind of wonderful that you have that the other way around. Um, but to that point, <laughs> no, no, that's, 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 that's wonderful. And I think um, a lot of people that have had you know, an amazing opportunity to grow in their field so that there's a lot of people that either rely on them or are learning from them or look up to them, then they start to have that perspective on life because there's so many people that they literally see around mm -hmm. them depending on them that they have this perspective. And so I think it's a really good point that you raise, which is something that I always talk about also in, in my coaching practice it is it doesn't have to be either or and your happiness and well-being and the good of others mm -hmm. they're not mutually exclusive they're in fact at the most effective level of it are most aligned mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's always a matter of asking the right questions mm -hmm. and in this case the question is very simple it's how yes yes <laughs> not this or that, not which one do I need to choose. Mm -hmm. No, it is how mm -hmm. do I get this and that? How can I serve best and how can I feel most aligned and happy? Mm -hmm. And normally when we find that overlap, that's when it's like supernova explosion yes. and everyone gets the best. You get the best mm -hmm. and the people around you get the best and the world gets the best. Mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting though because I feel like 
now that we're talking about this, uh, it's it's reminding me of a few conversations that I had in the past couple of years. And one of them was with a, a friend of mine who's a very successful entrepreneur and he's done some really interesting things in his life. And he mentioned that word to me, others. I was, I was um, reevaluating certain things, let's say, and kind of questioning certain things and deciding my next steps. And, and he mentioned exactly what you're talking about. How do you look of course within yourself but also like one thing that I'm a big believer in is that each of us we're we're part of a bigger community in every sense of the word whether it's at work whether it's in our personal lives as part of our families as part of our social groups um in, in so many different senses and I think it's always about how do we how do we participate it's, it shouldn't just be a, a give or take it's it's a combination of both and so um kind of just it's very interesting to me to have that conversation around mm. what that looks like. And it reminds me of um, one of the quotes, I think, associated with Gandhi, which is the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Mm. And I think that concept is very interesting for us to look to if we are feeling challenged in some sense or we're looking for some internal answers. At least it's worth exploring mm. <laughs> if someone hasn't already done so, I think. I really like this quotation and it resonates with me a lot. I remember many, many years ago, I was speaking to a really dear friend of mine and she was going through a rough time. Mm -hmm. And you know those moments when we, we're so deep in it mm -hmm. that we are completely fixated on this one thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're mm -hmm. you know, everything's in black colors and you're stuck and every, everything's bad and you're, you're, you're there. You're right in the thick of it in the quicksand. Mm -hmm. And I remember my advice to her was when, when it's like this, when you're completely stuck in that one, you know, obsessive pattern, mm -hmm. the best thing you can do is completely remove yourself out of the situation, break the pattern by taking off the focus of yourself and by helping someone else. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it ties in with, with a lot of physiological and psychological research as well of just motion, for example. Mm -hmm. Physically, when you're in movement, your your thoughts mm -hmm. all of a sudden move in a different way. So mm -hmm. you interrupt that pattern. Mm -hmm. But aside that, when we are stuck in these, you know, self-pity, self-wallowing loops of thoughts, it's always about self, 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 mm -hmm. self, self, self. And you're just stuck in that loop, right? So the best and quickest way to interrupt that is just take the person next to you or whoever you want and just focus on them all of a sudden. And then by helping them in whichever capacity you can, all of a sudden you found power mm -hmm. that you previously didn't have a moment ago. Yes, that's so such that's a great, valid point. Great, great, great truth to that. Mm -hmm. I've seen in, in practicality, it works. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a valid point though. And I think, but I think when it comes to service as well, sometimes that can be quite a, a big word. And I think a lot of the time it can be easy to feel as though you have to do something major mm. in order to tap into that. But like you say, it could be calling up Tiny a friend, mm -hmm. checking in on them. It could be helping an elderly person across the street. It could be giving up your chair for somebody who needs it. There are so many different ways that you can, I think, as you say, obviously support someone else, but also find your own power Power again. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Mm. So back to, back to your mindset. Mm -hmm. which is obviously my favorite topic. I want to ask you, what do you think are some of the characteristics or qualities of your mindset that you've developed over the years or that you've seen also be present mm -hmm. since very early on that have helped you the most in your life? Uh, a previous mentor of mine shared the expression with me, jump out of the plane and build the parachute on the way down. I'm sure you've already mm -hmm. heard this. Um, and it's in essence, another way of saying, you know, say yes to opportunity and figure it out the how mm. later. And so I think that that became something that I resonated a lot with as, as things were happening for me in my life. And as things at times started to happen quite quickly, obviously you have to make certain choices and sometimes you have to jump before you may feel ready. However, I think as I've as I've also been on my own journey, it's something that's almost been a continuous learning. It's like there are continually opportunities to check yourself on that and to see if you're still living by it, let's say. But I think that that ethos and that essence, I suppose, is something that has helped me 
a lot because I, I feel like I've recognized that actually a lot of the time, and this has been another common denominator maybe from some of the people that I've met who I look to and, and think that they've done major things with their lives or in their spaces or in, in their work, whatever realm, a lot of the time that's the, the, the concept that mm. they live by. And I think I've realized that a lot of the time we're never going to be ready. There will always be something else we can do, you know, something else we can prepare, something else we can think about that we maybe haven't thought about yet. Um, but when we just take that step, then that's when things can happen. Nothing can actually happen unless you take the step, unless you pick up the phone, unless you enter the competition, unless you, you know, say yes to mm. the opportunity. And so I think that that's a big thing and something that I've been reflecting on a lot recently, kind of going back to life in general and how it is finite. You know, what are the things that we we really feel that if we we only had a certain amount of time promised to us, we would regret having not tried. It's not to say it would work out, but I think many of us have things we may wish to try and sometimes we haven't facilitated that for whatever reason. Um, but it's not necessarily even about realizing it. I think it's just about giving yourself the chance to explore it because you may actually do it and feel then that's not what you thought it was going to be. Mm. <laughs> but if you just give yourself the space to to jump and and to try, then that will enable you to have a real valid opinion then on the matter rather than wondering what if. Yeah, speculative. A uh, real life tested hypothesis yes, rather exactly. than a speculation. Exactly. Absolutely. But how many times do we live by speculation? Oh, all the time. I mean, we were talking about some of these things earlier on, and I think that that's so relevant and it's so natural for us to sometimes fall into that space. But, you know, there's an expression I'd rather say oops than what if. Mm, and definitely. I think that's also a very interesting concept in itself. So. I don't know. I, f I feel like that's the really major thing for me. It's just like, how do we give ourselves the chance to try? Mm. And if we do, then we're jumping out of that airplane and we are building the parachute, but it's happening on the way down. What I'm thinking about now is from the way that you describe that you move in the world and you've conducted your life, I'm picking up on predominant tendencies of your mindset being a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset, a positive mindset versus a negative mindset. And uh, let's say a proactive rather than a reactive mindset. Those are all the things mm -hmm. that I'm mm -hmm. um, exploring right now on a, on a deeper level. And those are all the qualities that would propel you to see the glass half full mm -hmm. and take an action even if there's a, a risk of failure, which all of us have. So mm -hmm. I guess, what do you, th if you agree to, to this um, statement of mine, then <laughs> would you, what would you say are the things that allowed you to have that type of mindset? Do you think that's something that came from your parents? Do you think that's something you observed from somewhere mm -hmm. or that's something that was innate or something that came as a result of some events? Good question. <laughs> I think in all honesty, it's probably a combination of things. I feel initially it likely started because I felt as though I needed to prove myself to myself, I think, at a, at a deeper level. But initially it was, like I said to you, when I had the, the challenges that were impacting my schooling and my academic environment which was very important to me at the time to all of a sudden not feel that I could do that probably gave me this inner push as things unfolded in a different way then for me to feel like I I could look in myself in the mirror and feel like I am doing something mm. um, however as that's unfolded I feel being around people who challenge you being around people who challenge your your thoughts your limitations your expectations of yourself that's been incredibly helpful as well and that's not just in a physical environment like we were having a discussion earlier on I think that we um shared some things with each other mm. that's very much in line with that idea about who you surround yourself with is who you become but also now we are so lucky to be connected in such a digital age that if you can't physically be around someone who is going to challenge you in that capacity then you can listen to a podcast or you can watch a video mm. and read I a think, book re yeah read a book and this is something that has been a big tool I think for me in my life especially when I was 
getting started and, and forging my path, let's say, in a space when I didn't feel that the path was clear. I think those external mentors and educators that I started to look to really helped me to form my mindset and then to recognize that you know the, there is always a solution. Mm. This is something that a friend of mine shared with me some years ago now and I just remember when she said this it just for some reason it just stuck with me and I feel that so many times we we face situations that do challenge us and still you know I, I'm very much in this situation mm. still as well I'm sure you are too but it's about how do we I suppose approach it in the sense that if we can just remember that even if something is challenging just knowing that there is a solution there's likely someone you can call there's you know a resource that you can look to depending on what it is then I think that that's also about the the standpoint that you choose to move through life with. And it's like, I suppose, that growth mindset that you said rather than fixed mindset and recognizing that nothing will ever stay the same. Change is inevitable. I think that's also a big thing. Change is the only constant. It's the only constant, but it's also the thing that many of us fear the most. Yeah. And so I suppose kind of just leaning into that and learning to embrace that is also something that can be beneficial but also I mean to be honest with you one of the biggest things for me as well has been recognizing that you know growth only comes when you're outside your comfort zone and I know that sounds cliche and you see these pictures now on Instagram and all of these quotes but it really is so true and I think a lot of the time when you feel that fear that's actually when you are moving towards something yeah. that will benefit you um if you're too comfortable I think that that also means that you're not challenging yourself and it could be you know, it doesn't have to be anything out of this world. It could be that you set yourself the intention that you're going to go for a run instead of a walk. Mm. And then if you're feeling challenged by the run, that's you outside of your comfort zone. It's not a negative thing. It's actually a positive thing, mm. even if you last five minutes. Yeah. So I do think that that kind of mindset about willing to embrace change and willing to embrace discomfort, even if it's uncomfortable, mm. is something that can actually help you a lot in the long term. I completely am on the same page with you there. And another thing that I was wondering about is back in the day when you uh, were diagnosed and you were suffering from the chronic fatigue syndrome, mm -hmm. obviously we know that the result of that, that you, you know, you were, let's say, physically restricted, your activities were very physically restricted. And what you did with that was, you know, you started this blog. Mm -hmm. What was that thing that made you channel your energy and your focus that direction rather than, let's say, a less productive or helpful direction? Probably a combination of the, the fact that I was writing about something that I was passionate about. Like I, I loved fashion. I've always loved pretty things and, and how you can feel when you maybe put a certain color on. I mean, we were talking about mm -hmm. this earlier. Um, so I think kind of leaning into something that was bringing me joy in terms of the topic was was beneficial. I was also learning a lot and I think I have an inquisitive nature. So, I mean, as we were also talking about mm -hmm. earlier, I think learning new things and, and feeling as though I was solving puzzles, let's say, especially when I was starting to learn on the HTML encoding side, I think that, that helped me to want to pursue that further. Mm -hmm. But also I think it goes back to that kind of external um, motivation that we were referring to in terms of educational resources. And I started to listen to different podcasts and different online courses and different, I suppose, resources that were also helping me to shift the way in which I was looking at some of these things. And so I feel that a combination of all of those probably are what encouraged me at the time to focus more of my energy on that specifically mm. um, but it's an interesting question because I think looking back it's difficult to to pinpoint if there was one thing in particular but I think I think it was a combination of, of those things mm. Mm. I ask that because I'm trying to deeply understand you know the difference between a person that goes either that one direction or the exact opposite direction what I'm hearing you say mm. is really just going into the direction of expansiveness, mm. of action, of proactivity, of light in some way or form. Mm. So you were propelled by passion, by curiosity, by potential, by possibility. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of things that, that I hear 
uh, emerging here. And so I'm just thinking in my mind about a hypothetical person, which, you know, every single one of us has heard a story that goes exactly the opposite mm-hmm. direction. Mm-hmm. So what what would they be focusing on? And I'm guessing that they would be focusing on the exact opposite of the 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 shrinking, the re mm. reductive uh almost adjectives and capacities. So what could go wrong and why is this happening to me? And all the sort of unhelpful questions that then push you into the inaction mm. and into the you know re- regression from where you were a step before. So yeah, I think that just emphasizes I guess the importance of having something, something in your life that you see as that light in the tunnel, something that does, you know, light up your mind or light up your heart or or even your body if it's a sport. Um, and so just kind of maybe clinging on to that and seeing, seeing what happens after you explore and move towards that. As you say that, um, it kind of brings up for me this idea that like when it comes to young people now, Um, through some of the environments that I've been lucky to be in and some different uh, charities that I've been able to learn from and to spend time with. I I think for me, one of the biggest things that I'm most passionate about, especially when it comes to young people, which is obviously the age that I was facing many of these challenges, is what what can they do as opposed to what can they not do? Mm -hmm. And I think that that was one of the things actually that now that I look back and, and consider why did I spend more time on this? I think it was because it was something that I felt I could do. I think it was something I felt I was starting to do relatively well. And I was starting to have opportunities to, to, to network and to meet people of fascinating backgrounds from different countries. Like even in terms of young people who were also doing fashion blogs. Like I remember I connected with a, a young blogger in um, Hong Kong and another one in Singapore. And it was all of us around the same age. Mm. It was almost like this pen pal situation you're not alone all of a sudden you're Mm -hmm. not alone and I think that a really important thing is to find a way to focus on what you you can facilitate as opposed to what you cannot do because otherwise we end up down these rabbit holes of all of the things that we are suddenly not not inadequate to handle or inadequate let's say um in relation to and I think now, especially with social media, it's something that it's, it's so much more relevant than ever before. And if you look at children today, especially and teenagers today, especially comparison has become such a big thing Mm. that generations before, quite frankly, didn't have to deal with in the same way. And so I think kind of just going back to what can we do? How can you empower, especially young person? Of course, it's not just with young people, it's with all ages, but I think in my history let's say and I'm I I digress (laughs) but I think it's just really about how do we focus on on what is possible as opposed to what's not possible I completely agree with that and can you uh, tell me a little bit more about the charity world and how you enter that and what does that mean to you being in it and being able to you know empower communities children whoever you work with most often and and how has this exposure mm. changed you and changed your mindset well loaded question loaded question <laughs> <laughs> um I think the journey there was like there was a significant point in primary school when my class and I participated in something called the MS readathon which was a native multiple sclerosis mm. and basically what we did was we were given the task of reading books and then going to our friends and family and communities to ask for donations based on the books that we were reading and mm. i suppose it was a way to encourage young people to read and and to grow but also to be aware of how different experiences can help others as well and i think at that moment it was very interesting to me to realize how something that we were doing in essence for enjoyment, like many of us were reading fictional books, could be something that could positively contribute and help others. And then fast forward to now, um, I mean, there are some wonderful people and charities that I've been able to spend time with and to to learn from. I think a lot of the people who run these organizations are the real superheroes. You know, they're the ones who are changing lives and many of them very quietly but what I have been 
very grateful for is having the opportunity with the likes of Miss International to have a, a bigger platform to share some of these initiatives and, and these people and these projects has been something that's enabled me, I suppose, to, you know, having the chance to have access to this type of platform has enabled me, I suppose, to to bridge the gap between people who want to help and and projects that are doing amazing work and and of course there you know are so many people and so many projects out there doing amazing things but for me how it's shifted me um I had an experience last year when I visited India for the first time and when I was there I had the opportunity to visit a number of projects and to meet with a lot of different people in the NGO space handling a variety of challenges um, but one of them that I got to visit was, with was actually impromptu. It wasn't initially planned. We met at a dinner, would you believe? It's always always the it's way, always right? Like it's always divine intervention, let's say. Um, but it was with a lady who runs a charity called Lakshyam. And basically, she invited me the next day to go and visit one of their schools, which is inside one of the biggest slums in Delhi. Mm. And that was quite an experience because obviously it's it's an environment where the conditions are quite extreme and the the families who are living there have no access to running water, they have no access to electricity. And of course, off the back of that, how can you even contemplate education if mm. you don't have these other things? And so visiting that specific center, I think something in that experience just... I don't know, there was just something very special for me with that experience and with those children and with that time period. And so basically how it shifted me, I suppose, is just to to kind of recognize how, one, there is so much appreciation and curiosity in a child. So as we were talking about earlier on, children in particular, whatever walk of life, whatever background, whatever environment, they tend to have this zest mm. and this appreciation and this love. And that was something that really spoke to my heart and make me, made me want to explore that further, I suppose. But, but really, it was just an eye-opening experience that gave me the chance to... It was a very emotional and very meaningful experience in mm. a nutshell. Yeah. I spent time with the children of course who were just so beautiful and so eager to learn and, and be curious and kind of experience giving and receiving love the people who work with these children from the volunteers to the teachers like many of them for example if they want to go to the bathroom because of the environment they actually have to walk about 40 minutes to go to the bathroom because obviously there's no running water there's no electricity and it's inside a, a slum so it just taught me a lot about how people give and how people participate in in doing something and and it just I suppose kind of lit this fire in me in a, a different way to before to want to explore that further and want to learn more about how we can each be participants I suppose in in creating and carving this better future I think especially with children like there's so much that we can do um and I don't think that any child deserves to be in an environment where they don't have equal access to opportunity mm. so that was probably the biggest the biggest thing for me I can imagine that the the impact that you're describing of course you know being being emotional and being very very powerful is is really due to the expansion of the perspective on life mm -hmm. because you see i guess you come into stark contrast of what we first world problems that we have versus real life problems that some people and a lot of mm -hmm. children have and i guess that I would imagine is very humbling, mm -hmm. but also very enlightening and, and in a way very inspiring and very, very motivating in a way to, I guess, just do more. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, as you say, it is a stark, it's a stark contrast. And I've been really grateful to meet some amazing people, not just in India, like also at home in Ireland, there's a charity that I um, 
have so much respect for, which is run by local people from, you know, the kind of surrounding area where I grew up called Hope for Homeless. And it works with people in Ireland who are struggling with the homelessness crisis. And what that looks like could be anything from having nowhere to lay your head to having somewhere to lay your head, but having no other resources to pay for food and to to take care of yourself. And so I think it's just, for me, it's that there there are issues everywhere we look but it's also incredibly inspiring to recognize that there are also people doing the work mm. and people who want to help and how we can actually be involved in that in whatever capacity. It could be, like I said, it could be picking up the phone to a friend and checking in on them. Mm. It could be becoming a volunteer. It could be making a donation. Um, but I think the biggest lesson for me was just that there are ways that we can do something mm. and we may not be able to change the entire world, but that expression or idea that we can change one means that there's actually a whole host of significance that each of us can have with our lives if we just choose to explore that path. You know, one of the questions I was going to ask you is practically, you know, for the people listening and watching and for also the skeptics out there that are going to be like, okay, but how? This is all very nice, but like, how, what can we do, right? Um, it's it's what you just said. I, I firmly believe that. I believe that if you're able to impact one person in your network or around you, you don't know what sort of significance your positive impact had mm -hmm. on that person and therefore how will they alter their behavior in their life out of that one interaction with you so that's what's called the ripple effect right mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so from that perspective each one of us really is very very powerful mm -hmm. and the ripples uh amplify mm -hmm. uh in their and in, in their magnitude expands with each ripple so mm. we are very powerful yes yeah, so i think to that if each of us take a moment to reflect on significant conversations that we may have had in our life that's left us feeling better mm. or with some insight that's helped us. A lot of the time, those people who shared that with us may not have recognized what they were sharing yeah. with us in that time. So I think, as you say, to recognize that actually each of us do have a, a role to play and each of us do have something to contribute, that's also a way to like you were kind of saying earlier, to kind of step into your power and to to start that process, I suppose, of figuring out what a fulfilled life looks like for you, but also how it can be contributing to others around you as mm. well. It's such a it's such an interesting topic to me. Yeah. Mm. No, I I I really resonate with what we're talking about a lot and one other thing that you mentioned earlier you know how these kids energy mm. inspired you so much which yeah. brings me back to this thing that my mom used to say always when I was a kid which is a wise man is the one that stays a kid forever mm. and so it's it's actually a question or rather an a thought that I keep at the forefront in my mind Because as I go through life, I meet more and more. And as I, let's mm. say, sharpen my filter and define the filter of the people that I like to be around and people that I value, I keep meeting more and more incredible people. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <The> revelation, <laughs> right? So, and I often ponder on the common denominators and of those people and one of the, uh, let's say, One of the criteria by which I uh, evaluate, you know, these people is the way that they make me feel. So the mm -hmm. energy of our, our, our energies interacting. Yes. So to that point, to, to what I'm saying about children and staying a kid forever, I think that energy that you perceive from mm -hmm. people is oftentimes that energy of of zest, of vibrancy, yes. of love for life, mm -hmm. which if you're able to conserve in the decades, many, many decades, and up until, you know, the very old age, is is that that attracts, mm -hmm. you know, other people that other people love to to feel mm -hmm. when they're when they're around, people that are able to preserve that. So I guess it's just an open, let's say, brainstorm topic. Uh, around how we can all preserve mm. more of that childlike wonder, appreciation 
for life and just carry that in us at all times or at least most of the time in order to have that energy. Mm. This is a very interesting thought to me, especially because earlier on we were obviously talking about charging, right? So if each of us think about the, the fact that we have a mobile device, let's say, or a laptop or a camera, and, and each of those things need to be charged at different times, I think many of us sometimes forget that we also have a battery. And are we charging that battery? Mm. So I can share in my case, I felt that one of the, the chargers that have been constant throughout my life is music and it's singing and spending time with um, people. Like I'm very much a people person. So I've recognized maybe periods of my life where for whatever reason, maybe I've done less of that or I haven't made it a priority. It can be the same with going to the gym. It can be a whole host of different things. But how do we prioritize ensuring that we are aware mm. of our chargers? If it's a place, if it's certain people, if it's a certain activity, then I think... Uh, from my experience, what's helped, I suppose, in, in my learning process has kind of just been recognizing that I think when you look at a child, a lot of the time they, they're so authentic. Mm. They'll say what they feel. They will eat. If they don't want to eat something, they'll say, I don't want to eat that. Or they will, they'll, they'll it's act easy. in a very, yes, exactly. And I think that that's also part of it, finding how we can be who we are More and truthful. how we can accept who we are. And it's definitely a process. I mean, I feel I'm very much on the journey myself, but just paying attention to those commonalities, I suppose, and those tools, as well as what brings us light, what brings us joy and finding space to do those things, mm. to fill our cup. Thank you for saying, I was literally oh, just oh about to say that, that this, your, mm, let's say, comparison of us being as the phones that need charging mm -hmm. is something that I haven't heard before. And I really love that, um, love that comparison. But what we have all heard is exactly the cup being, being filled. Mm -hmm. And so I guess that's just a reminder that that cup needs to be full all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I always hear, you know, uh, I even mentioned this before, you know, in terms of your positive and negative mindset, we say seeing the yeah, the glass half full, half empty. Okay, yes, that's yes. fine. And then we use this expression in terms of taking care of yourself, of, you know, filling your own cup. But I think that there's a space for us to actually establish now mm. that our notion, our ongoing notion and standard should be of that cup being full. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's such a, I mean, how can we give to the people around us if we don't have... We can't. Resources. <laughs> well, we can't. And and this is to your point about what is going to recharge that battery. What is mm. going to be the water that will be mm. filling our cup mm -hmm. continuously. And then yes. making a practice, having the awareness around this notion and then making it a practice of refilling, refilling, refilling that cup all the time. And then making that practice a priority, <laughs> which yeah. can sometimes be... A challenge. I mean, we were talking about it when so many things are going on, when life can be so busy, when there can be so many different things pulling you in all directions. It can be difficult sometimes to remember that. But I do think that it's so important, like even sleep, mm -hmm. you know, how much rest we're allowing ourselves. All of these things are so foundational to our health and our well-being. And in order for us to, I think, be present and to give in the way that we may wish to, um, we have to we have to take care of that we have to take mm. care of our battery i think thinking thinking out loud i think this is all a matter of having this conversation mm -hmm. like we're having right now mm -hmm. for each one person that's listening and watching to have this little sit down and mm. to have this exercise of establishing mm -hmm. all of what's been said that 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 is a non-negotiable. Mm. This is a practice that I need to understand mm -hmm. that I need to figure out mm -hmm. what is my water mm -hmm. that I need to write down how often is it that I'm refilling that cup regularly with these water acti watering activities. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then I'd say 
I think it's a matter of also establishing during this exercise, well, what is that threshold? What is the what is this marker on the on the glass that never needs to drop under? Because the reality, what, what, what you just spoke about, we're talking here about the balance, the infamous mystical oh. magical balance, <laughs> the balance, yeah, um, which I've spoken about quite a lot in the previous podcast episode okay. as well. And this is, uh, let's say, a fairly recent notion and deduction of mine that there really is no such thing as as balance, as a perfect balance. We are just always a dot mm -hmm. on a moving uh, line. And it will never, ever, ever be perfectly, perfectly, mathematically divided, balanced, never. So we just need to accept that we are always somewhere on that line. Let's say that that's the baseline. And so I guess bringing it back to the to the glass comparison and to our own battery charging practices, it's about establishing where that red line is mm -hmm. under which it should never fall under. And if we approach that line, our, our, our sensors go off and we're like, Shh, wait, mm -hmm. no, I will prioritize sleep because I haven't slept in the past yes, two days yes. and everything else can just take a backseat right now. Um, and equally, and equally, I will say it, it's not just negative. Everything, everything has two polarities, mm -hmm. right? So I've, I've recently been in this phase where my cup is overflowing. Yes, I've yes. now, I've had so many incredible experiences. I've learned so much. I've been mm -hmm. so inspired. I am, my cup is literally overflowing. I have so much to give and I am creating now ways of me to sharing this mm -hmm. this water that's just mm -hmm. overflowing from mm -hmm. my cup so it goes both ways right mm -hmm. to having this awareness mm -hmm. and to sharing you know when it's too too much too little so why i say this uh about this exercise that needs to be completed with this line mm -hmm. this red line is because there's such a thing that we never break our standard we live mm -hmm. within that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when and if by any um happening or for whatever reason the standard is broken that is a huge life impactful life stopping event and so we we don't take that lightly that is not mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. so that's why i'm saying it's it's super important for in this exercise everyone that does this to define to define that um that line on the cup that doesn't doesn't get broken and because when we have that awareness mm -hmm. we will be following that mm. i think Two things come to mind when you say this for me. Uh, one of those is, I like the way you're saying about the concept of balance maybe being a little ambiguous and instead looking towards the idea of integration. Mm. Like all of these things work together, whether we like it or not, everything is is a part in a greater system. Um, but also when you're doing these exercises, I think of self-evaluation or review or how do I improve? How do I readjust? A stop doing list can also mm. be very valuable and Definitely. that could be habits it could be actions it could be many things but I think that that also can be a helpful tool at least it's something that I've enjoyed doing Definitely. at times that I've found very insightful mm. when it comes to this analysis let's say thank you for sharing that completely agree on you another thing that's um I noticed that you mentioned earlier which I I think is very useful is your awareness around our mortality mm. and how that has a huge impact on your behavior, your action taking, your perspective on life. So I guess my question is, do you have any specific practices that allow you to stay aware of that? And you've had obviously the experience earlier on, which you were taking away the things that were normal to you. So I guess that emphasize as well that awareness at the time so how do you it's probably been a combination of things again it's my favorite answer it seems um but i think that when it comes down to it it can be very easy for us to take for granted mm. things and i'm absolutely guilty of that just as much as anyone else but i think ensuring that you have the time every so often to spend a little bit of Maybe like it could be evaluating goals, for example. It could be that you set every year a certain number of things you'd like to do or accomplish or intend mm. to pursue. And then honestly looking at yourself 12 months later and asking, have I moved forward mm. with any of these things? That can be one very literal way of checking in with yourself. I think another thing that can be helpful is to have people around you who really know what you 
mm. hope to do. And having people who can look at you directly in the eye and say, you're not doing what you said you were going to do, who call you out. Mm. And I think in the age of, especially in today's day and age, we're very much in a, I feel a situation where sometimes you, you don't want to hurt someone's feelings and you want to be pleasing, which I completely understand because we want to lead from a place of kindness and love, mm. right? But also recognizing that sometimes the best friendship or the, the best dynamic in a relationship of course, you know, carefully selected relationships, let's say, are the ones where someone can say, I love you, mm. but have you recognized that you've not made space for this yeah. or you've dropped the ball here? And I think that's also been something that's helped me at times to recognize that, oh my, maybe I have, maybe I have lost sight of something. And I think that's quite natural, especially when there's a lot going on and things can be quite busy, but just recognizing that there is a solution, but there's only a solution if we look ourselves in the mirror and say, okay, you haven't made space for this, or this has clearly not been a priority. Because sometimes we won't wish to kid ourselves and say, oh, make an excuse, let's mm. say. And again, I, I fully feel that I'm guilty of this at times, but just really allowing ourselves to be honest with ourselves and to question what's really important, because it is finite. We don't know how long we have. Um, but I think if we can wake up and know every day we're doing something, it could be something very small that's taking us towards that core dream or core driver, whatever mm -hmm. that looks like, it's helpful. And also maybe being honest with yourself in terms of what may be the priorities for you, because sometimes there can be so much going on that it's important to recognize, okay, if there's, let's say, five things I'd really like to do, what are the most important two yeah well, what's what's number one yeah. so that you know you have that overarching objective and then if the other things can also happen it's quite often I think when you're moving in that direction it can facilitate more mm. happening but having something that can be like a north star a guiding light um I have found at times to be helpful for me especially as I've been maybe reimagining certain things in my life and walking a new path in certain senses mm. you alluded to something that is a big topic for me as well oh. lately which is <laughs> uh i i just call it the truth mm. and the power of truth mm -hmm. power of radical truth actually and how i see truth as being this liberating thing this mm. this light that shines you know, it's rays on everything that is holding you back, really. And I'll, I'll give some, some simple examples, you know, dating life, right? So maybe this happens to a lot of women, so I'm just going to say this example, is maybe they go on a date and then they don't quite, you know, feel it. Mm -hmm. They are not really interested, but maybe the other, maybe, maybe the man is interested, the other party is interested. Um, and you know, instead of maybe saying so straight, the women, for various reasons, just feel that, you know, they they don't say anything, they don't want to hurt anyone, you know, so they just kind of like, mm -hmm. just say nothing. And, and, you know, the examples can be, can be different. It also can be, you know, if you're in a relationship, there's something mm -hmm. that doesn't work for the same reasons, you maybe don't say anything, you hope it passes on its own and mm -hmm. never repeats itself and solves itself and so on and so forth there's a million examples of let's say this dynamic mm. and what i found is when we really muster the courage mm. and we choose the path of truth mm -hmm. however uncomfortable it might seem mm -hmm. it always leads to better outcomes always because even though in the moment it can be uncomfortable and it might be for both parties truthfully it always leads to an outcome that l allows people to move on mm -hmm. heal faster be authentic mm. allow other people to be authentic mm -hmm. empower you by the quality of allowing you to find that courage so yeah truth heals it's interesting though because i feel like from what you're just saying, it can be something that many of us avoid at times, 
maybe from a place of fear or discomfort. But what if, what if that process is actually the most impactful or radical form of self-love? Mm. So it's an act actually that, okay, you may have to go through some discomfort in order to move through it, but the outcome could be a version of you that feels more aligned, happier, more content, more fulfilled, um, and more in tune. So then all of a sudden that act of truth, because truth, I think also, like you say, can be so empowering, but I do feel that sometimes there can be a little bit of a negative association mm. with that in terms of the discomfort that sometimes can come if somebody is bluntly honest or mm. bluntly truthful. And the same when it comes to us evaluating ourselves with truth. So sometimes it's not even about somebody else, I don't think. It's sometimes just about our own honesty with ourselves. Mm. But what if it's actually a very powerful form of love? Because if we if we shift that perspective, then all of a sudden most of us like love. Yeah. Most of us wish for love in our lives. I think that truth in one way or another, be it in this uncomfortable shaking motion <laughs> yes. or or a gentler, mm. let's say, passage guiding, leads us closer to us. Mm. To the truest, more honest versions of us. Mm. And that is healing. That is powerful. That is more of life mm. rather than the opposite, which is in some way or form mm -hmm. faking it or pleasing people or fearing things and shrinking yourself. Like there's mm. many ways we can describe it. And so this is really something that I've been practicing myself recently in tiny, many, many tiny ways, mm -hmm. also bigger ways. <laughs> But it's, it's incredible that at the end of the day, when, I, when I'm falling asleep and I'm thinking about things that I'm grateful for mm -hmm. or that I'm proud of myself for, which, by the way, is a practice you should do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, it's sometimes these tiny things that I that I did either internally, like you say, even such as journaling about yourself mm -hmm. and maybe your shortcomings or admitting your faults or where you did something wrong with yourself. So being true, true with yourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to mm -hmm. be with someone. Or it is with speaking up to a friend and telling them that you don't really want to do that plan, that it is just, it's just not for you. Yes, yes. And it's very uncomfortable because there's a lot of expectations mm -hmm. from both sides and, you know, stories that we've told mm -hmm. our, each other and mm -hmm. ourselves. But those are the things that, for me, just made the hugest difference of all. Mm -hmm. Not maybe, you know, something that loads of people can see in like this huge event or this accolade. It's those things. Because I really think that in the end of the day, how we feel about ourselves, like that happiness level, how we are about ourselves and about our life mm. is most closely related to our relationship to ourself. And who is the person that influences that relationship, I wonder? And by It's what big actions, question. right? <laughs> right. So, right. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I went off a little bit of a tangent, but it's true, truth though. is... It's true. It's true. Truth. It's true. It's truth. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Anyway, one thing that I didn't ask you, which is very important to me and has been a pervasive um, presence in all of the episodes is purpose. So what do you think is your purpose, Hannah, if you know this? Mm. Well, I feel for me, um, I have some ideas, let's say, and I, I think I'm, I'm figuring out still what that looks mm. like for me in my life in terms of projects and the the path let's say but I think at the the core of it it's very much about spending time with people and telling stories and hopefully being some sort of bridge you know I think one of the things that I've recognized like you even said earlier on like how can someone help mm. that's kind of a big question and I think what I've recognized with with me is I've been very lucky to meet some fascinating people from many different walks of life and being in different environments I'm seeing this theme maybe starting to emerge where maybe I can be like a conduit or a bridge, if you will, to hopefully create more relationships and more connections to 
facilitate more love, mm. whatever that looks like. But it's, um, it's a big question. It's a really, really big question. And I think something that sometimes as well, we, I mean, I, I can only speak for myself, but sometimes it's a question that we're not often asking mm. ourselves because we're so focused on the things rather than the why. Mm. What do you feel that your purpose is though? Oh my gosh, love that you asked me that. <laughs> so my purpose is really to have a positive mm -hmm. impact on as many people's lives as I can in my lifetime. And so the question is then in what way? So in this moment, it is via my coaching practice, first and foremost. So I truly firmly believe that every human being has incredible, incredible power within them, mm. incredible wisdom and infinite, truly infinite potential. Mm -hmm. And so it's just a matter of awakening people to that notion because most of us are sleeping and most of us are dormant and unaware of that potential and of that power. So that is my purpose in this lifetime. And I'm sure that the modalities through which I'll be able to do that are going to change over the years, mm -hmm. hopefully expand, hopefully grow and become more and more powerful, just like mm -hmm. rivers of Delta that, you know, become these tiny little different modalities. Now it's coaching, now it's this podcast. I'm sharing, you know, knowledge and experience and energy of people such as yourself and and others that want to share with the world, that want to share with people that are listening and watching. And um, who knows what many other ways there will be in the future. But yeah. I love though that you said right now, mm. it looks like X and Y. Because I also feel that sometimes, like for example, and I'd love your thoughts on this. I know at, at times I've connected my identity mm. to certain vehicles which at the time were maybe my primary focus or the primary path to take. However, as you say, it's, it's fluid. It's something that can shift and evolve. And I think that that's something that's so powerful when you share that and you hold that space for everybody else to also have that mm. acceptance and knowing that it may shift and it may change. But that's also part of the beauty mm. of it. I think that was a big lesson actually for me with this whole beauty pageant experience and now having the opportunity to be Miss International Ireland and have the chance to go and obviously participate in the global competition and all of the beautiful things that will come along with that but also recognizing that that's also a role that has a certain period of time so it's also what happens next and how do we evolve and mm. that's really beautiful the way you shared your hopes and your I'd say intentions so thank yeah. you for Thank you for asking me this Thank question. You. I am always in the chair of the, <laughs> yes. of, the, of the interviewer, but it's very nice to to have to have somebody to to ask a question as well. And this is my favorite one. Oh. But um, but yeah, to your point, I think it can be very restrictive and also stressful mm. for people when they, as you say, tie their identities mm. to a temporary modality of externalization of their purpose mm -hmm. yeah you shouldn't do that <laughs> no <laughs> I mean for in in two words for me my purpose is help people mm. but and I I I feel the need to follow it up with you know some some specifications because it's like well it's like this this river of delta right there's a source sure. of water and then there's like a myriad of little kind of branches mm -hmm. that branch off of that main body mm -hmm. and and those can and will change and I think it's it's very helpful for all of us to understand that that's to be expected mm. and and everything as you said we said earlier in this conversation changes and evolves all the time so it's about being energized also being energized by this notion itself mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. your life hopefully will be long and that means that there's going to be so many different branches and modalities that you'll be able to explore mm -hmm. so as long as you stay in alignment with that main north star with that main yes. purpose that mm -hmm. that defines just the core of your being the core of your soul and aligns 
so intensely with it. So it has to be somewhat vague mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that it then can take specific shapes in different times of your life. Mm-hmm. Very powerful. And and to that point as well, I think one of the most exciting things about the the time that we live in is how if you think back 50, 60 years, it was very much so when you choose a path, that's your path. Mm. But today, there is more fluidity, there's more flexibility, even if we look at now how so many people are working at home and at the office, this hybrid concept. Mm. And so I think that that also lends itself to this exploration of purpose, of ability, of skills, of of love and joy. Mm. And so I think that's also one of the reasons why we should allow ourselves at least at times to lean into that and to explore Definitely. what that looks like what that means for us 100 percent. i love that you said that i love that you said that as much as and this is for all the high performers <laughs> as much as you know those those sprint those zero in focus super disciplined yeah. sprints are needed they're need, absolutely needed to get things done uh on the on the other uh, side of the coin of that mm-hmm. same coin other mm-hmm. side <laughs> is these rest mm. do nothing spontaneous creativity just mm-hmm. whatever feel, what you feel like let it flow mm-hmm. types of moments because those are the ones that then give you those eureka moments they give you those insights they give you those new ideas that will become those things that you will be sprinting for later on mm-hmm. whereas if you're always just in this one modality of this one side of the coin, then you're missing out on, on 50% of the pie. Mm-hmm. It's like someone once said to me before that we're like diamonds. You mm. know, a diamond has multi facets, it's multifaceted. And I think if we can look at ourselves in the same way, then we can also recognize that there is space for those different things. But the only way that they can really shine is if we create a little bit of an opportunity for them mm. to come through. So it could be that we're focusing 90% of our energy on, on the sprint, but there still is that 5% that can be given to these other elements of who we are. And at times, I think maybe you give less, like it's, it's a give and take and it's a, a dance with yourself, I feel. Mm. <laughs> um, but it's very interesting to think about those nuances that make us who we are. No, we we all have so much more to offer when we are the full versions of ourselves and we're in bloom, let's mm. say, like a flower. Um, it's a very interesting thoughts that you're sharing. Well, on this note, um, on this beautiful multifaceted <laughs> diamond, yes, yes. light, truth, purpose <laughs> note, I thank you so much for your time thank and for you. your beautiful story and experience that you shared with us today. I hope that this will be useful and inspiring to people i hope that they can take away something for themselves that they can apply in their in their lives and if anyone has any questions for hannah please reach out to to me to her we'll be happy to to answer your inquiries and your questions do you have any message for the audience any takeaway words listen to dana's podcast (laughs) that's right (laughs) no just thank you and thank you for having me thank you for sharing these these thoughts i think it was a really lovely discussion and like you say i hope that hope that there was some value in it so certainly was (laughs) lots of love for me for me already so all right thank you so much thank you Hello friends, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to subscribe and share it with someone. I would love to hear your feedback and suggestions as to what guests you would like to see on the show next. See you next week.